Hey, TDFers, TDF fans, my name is Greg Mosgala. I'm currently playing the role of John in Cost of Living on Broadway. So excited to be talking with you today. I will give a self-description of myself in just a second, but I'm going to kick it over to my lovely co-star, Kara, to introduce herself. <laughs> my name is Kara Young, and I am Jess in a Cost of Living, and I'm very excited to speak with all of you today. Um, with Greg Mosgala. <laughs> thank you, thank you. Um, I'm a, a white cisgender male with uh, dark uh, brown hair, uh, kind of floppy hair at the moment. I'm wearing a yellow shirt with a blue print on it, and I have a, a, a light blue background. I am a black woman, petite black woman, um, who's wearing a jumpsuit, that is painted all over a black jumpsuit with splotches of paint and a yellow beanie and i have uh blonde tips at the moment i guess you would say cool. and i have a birthmark over my left eye a green birthmark nice i should also say i identify as disabled i was born with cerebral palsy so thanks Greg, yeah. you've been with Cost of Living since its first reading. <laughs> yeah, and Carrie, you're new to the show. <laughs> so, um, yeah, what did you what did you think of, what did you think when you first uh, uh, read the script? Uh, what did I think? I had I had a spectrum of like the emotional wheel. Like, if there was like a spectrum of like emotions and feelings I think I hit I think I hit most of them I think that's what Martina's play did to me that's cool mm -hmm. yeah I um I'd never read a play you know it's it's very hard for me it's very hard for me to read plays just to read them by myself like I I need like a table read I need to hear them like usually mm -hmm. out loud mm -hmm. um but this was one of those rare plays for me that just immediately like locked in like just completely grab me by the heart and grab me by the gut right off the page uh from that first uh um eddie monologue the prologue the character of eddie starts to play with this long prologue um and i just loved the character of john you know i'd never really seen a character with cerebral palsy uh depicted so well and i just couldn't uh, i felt like a great uh i was super excited to just dive in um and have the opportunity to just uh, explore him and play that character. Yeah. And I've been doing it forever. <laughs> but it's awesome. It's kind of like every, you know, even though I've been with it for a while, it's like, you know, every day, it's like revisiting an old friend you haven't seen in a while. And, you know, that type of friend where you can just like pick up right where you left off, even if you haven't seen them in, in, in a bunch of years. And um, yeah, it's, it's really, it's fantastic. So. It must be something to be with a play for a really, a really long time, but also like what discovery feels that like discoveries for, for a longer period of time, you know, a beautiful thing. Yeah. 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 I also have the great privilege of working with you. So, you know, that's super fun. That's I new. Great, I got the great privilege of working with you. So, I mean, you never know what you're going to get. Except excellence. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Um, um, the question is. Um, oh, mm -hmm. go, sorry. <laughs> okay. Your characters are frequently very physical with each other as Jess takes care of John. What was your process for becoming comfortable during those scenes? I feel like we're still in our process, don't you think? I mean, in a way, I mean, we're very open. We're very, I mean, but. Yeah, but again, so uh, so our relationship is, Jess and John, the relationship is um, uh, 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 Jess plays John's attendant, care attendant, caregiver, right? 
because uh, of the nature of John's uh, disability. He he needs someone to dress him and shave him and wash him. And so there's a lot of intimacy in the play, a lot of physical intimacy in the play. Um, and I think it's, you know, we are now in a good way in the age of int intimacy directors, um, you know, and that's, and that's a very uh, 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 big issue in the field right now, as, as it should be, to make sure that everybody feels safe and um uh, respected, right, when these issues arise. Um, so I think I think what's great about the play is it's it just is slice of life. It is it is just a clear depiction of what the daily routine for these two people uh, is and how their relationship develops over a number of months. So in that way, it's it's just almost um, it's just, yeah, it's just, it's almost slice of life, uh, amped up, you know, with, with a lot of heart and, uh, um, oomph, right. I would say, yeah. But I think, um, one of the things that we, you know, I, I remember having a conversation with Joe Bonnie, the director, uh, when I, when we knew you were going to be cast and I was like, well, I'll, let me just call Kara and like, let have a, have a one-to-one -one conversation with her, you know, about, about what we're going to be doing, you know, and making sure that at least we can talk, you know, so, you know, uh, we, uh, the lines of communication are open between us, mm -hmm. right? Um, and so that we can feel comfortable with each other before uh, we even get into the rehearsal room on day one. So, um, I don't know how it is for you, but I would just say it's so highly choreographed. Um, uh, within uh, the structure of the of the play and those scenes, that um, I feel a lot of that stuff takes care of itself. But I'd love to hear what you you have to say. No, I mean I almost feel like it's something that continues to grow. I mean it is a very intimate play. Uh, we we do have we do have that, but I think even with that scene, as intimate as it is, there's a there's a level of intimacy even when we first meet, and mm -hmm. when and the the journey of vulnerability throughout. Like I think, like I mean, it almost is a journey of vulnerability. It is a journey of intimacy, you know. Um, so I feel like it's something that is continuously growing. Yeah. Like right now, now that we're in performances, now that it's for um, an audience, it, be, it there's something that like, it just is, it's, it's taking its own life and its own shape as we uh, perform it to performance to performance. So I almost feel like it's, you know, what it, what it's going to be at the end of our run you know, is not what it was, you know, mm -hmm. the beginning of our process. Um, yeah, yeah, yeah. But, um, and so I'm, I'm just, I just, it's, it's a beautiful, it's a beautiful intimate journey with, uh, I think it's probably the most intimate I've ever been with another actor and I'm happy that I get to do it with you. Oh, that's so lovely. Thank you. Likewise. And I don't know about you, but I've had, I've had people come up, you know, just in uh, what tonight's going to be our fourth preview right mm -hmm. so our fourth time for an audience but i've already had people come up after the show at the stage door and being like i have done that yeah you know i i did that for my a family member or loved one or that was my job and like to see that uh represented you know to see that relationship to see that intimacy um i think it's something that most people will relate to because at the end of the day everyone will uh, you know regardless uh, uh, you know, if you're, if you're born with a disability, but everyone will require care at some point in their lives, right? On a, on a long enough timeline. So I think to, to, to see that depicted so um, gracefully, right? And sensitively um, by Martina and then embodied by us, I think people are really responding to that already, which is really fantastic. Yeah. Um. This is how each character makes a living is a frequent topic of conversation. <laughs> what, sorry, what are the best and worst jobs you've had beyond acting? <laughs> Sometimes acting is the best and worst job. But... 
Um. <laughs> Go for it, girl. Oh, me first? Oh, yeah. man. Okay. Um, so I, I would have to say, uh, beyond acting, best and worst job. I, I still am working my day job. I mean, I'm on kind of hiatus. I have a great setup with them. They, they um, mm -hmm. come work for lets me go and be an actor when I need to be an actor. Um, but I work for a company that cleans up after fires and floods. Like they do in commercial residential buildings, they do disaster restoration. And it is just a really fantastic play, place to work. Like they're really wonderful people. And like, I get calls every day. I'd be like, I, I have a flood, I have a fire, I have this situation in my house. And, you know, it's like, I can, okay, I'm here to help, you know? And it just feels really, um, um, I, I love it because I don't have to think about theater. <laughs> I don't have to think about, you know, um, <laughs> like I don't have to think about that next, you know, why isn't the phone ringing and uh, what's my identity and who am I in this world, you know? Mm -hmm. um, and it's uh, it's just a nice, really grounding um, uh, in environment for me, you know? That's my best job. I got a worse one, but why don't you? Yikes. Um. <laughs> <laughs> I've had so many, I've still had so many kind of jobs. Um, but you know, like there's this part of me that's also like, you know, like, I don't even know if I can categorize the jobs that are like not acting in a way because they have taught me that I really need to follow my dreams. <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> you know, okay. like almost like it's like I'm doing this and then like, I'm like, you know, there's like a day where you're like, uh-uh mm -hmm. like, i'm not but but you almost need those things in order to see like you need you need the you know like the the idea of like you, you the just the yin and the yang of it all and, and like, the darkness and the lightness of it all or like you know darkness light you know whatever but yeah. you know it, it just you i i have had jobs that have and i feel like every single one of them have has taught me a very great lesson and not necessarily just to be an actor but just like lessons, you know, just like lessons on lessons on lessons. And I think, you know, some of my jobs have been very humbling and um, just, just what it, what it means to be a human in the world. So like, I'm, I'm not even, it's not even complaining about best or worst, you know, I've had mm -hmm. like horrible bosses I've had like, but, but, but at the same time, they're all, they've all taught me something about life up until this point. I mean, it's, it's, you know, the best experience, the best education is experience, really. Like, so I'm not really hating on my ex jobs, you know. That's that's cool. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, I dig that. Um, <laughs> I lost my train of thought. Anyway, <laughs> I don't know what I was gonna say. I'll share my worst job. I was working for uh, a large ice cream chain. Uh, it was like one <laughs> summer in college when I had like four jobs. <laughs> And it was the worst job I have ever had. Like, I don't know. I thought it would be fun. And I thought I would get a lot of ice cream. And it was not fun. And I didn't get any ice cream. So, <laughs> but the no ice cream part was my fault. I just didn't take advantage of that perk. I think I just wanted to get out of there so fast. I remember making, I didn't, somebody, I remember uh, somebody asked for an iced coffee. And I didn't know how to make. Like, you don't go to an ice cream parlor and ask for an iced coffee, A, number one, right? But I didn't even know, like, how to, so what I did was I poured ice in a cup and then put hot coffee <laughs> over the ice. And the person looked at me like, you're an idiot. And I was. And I don't know if I still know how to make iced coffee, but anyway. <laughs> that, that, that was that was one of my one of my, one of my humbling horrible job experiences. Oh my goodness. Um. Yeah. When your characters meet, there's a lot of judgment on both sides. Have you ever felt judged at first sight? Yes. No, All never, the time. Never. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> Yes. I mean, I think there's like a, I think there's like a level now where you're like, nah, whatever. But I do feel like people do judge. 
Well, do you um, think that's just human nature? Like people just can't help but. Um. Yeah, I do. I do think it's. I do. I do. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. I think that's what our. I mean, our our characters have. That's kind of like a running through line, you know, through all our scenes, you know, of of judgment and and kind of misperception. And I think there's this great like that's where we meet too. Like both of our characters are, they make judgments about each other. They're judged by other people because of their. Uh, whatever their looks, their physicality, their their background, their class, right? Mm -hmm. But they um, they manage to uh, uh, find common ground, right? Um, for for a while, you know, and are pleasantly surprised by each other. I think that's where they really that's that's where Jess and John meet, right? Is they at least I think anyway they understand what it is to be to be judged, you know, and and to be misinterpreted. Um, right. And to fight against that, right? Um, and that's kind of this—that's this this initial spark between them. Mm -hmm. Great, yeah. Um, <clears throat> yeah. Cost of living features characters rarely seen on Broadway in terms of disability, class, and culture. What are your hopes for expanded representation on stage? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. We keep that 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 art reflects the world, like really, and that that pe the people who are the people who are in charge, right? That are that are that they are reflecting the world, and even their workspaces are reflecting the world, honestly. Mm -hmm. And I think that if workspaces reflect the world and the way the world looks, specifically the way like New York City looks you know, then I feel like the choices that are going to be made are going to be more equitable and more accessible to all. Yeah, I agree. I think there's something really special about this play in particular because of because of the characters and because of who's embodying those characters. And, and for the first time, you know, uh, there's an incredible intersectionality in this play. But, mm -hmm. you know, I think this play really is uh making history because it to the best of my knowledge it's the first original play on broadway to feature characters with disabilities played by characters with disabilities physical disabilities i should say right um so and again i think it's what what has enabled that what is manifesting that is the story is the work of art itself you know so i think to develop new plays to take risks on new plays you know like cost of living right that are pointing to these things these issues will never go like again those issues of disability class economics like this is something we're all dealing with right in some mm -hmm. way shape or form especially coming out of covid or still in this like pre post covid world you know which has been this mass disabling event which is really uh exposed and torn open all, all the issues around you know like class and and economics and th and those disparities, healthy, unhealthy, whatever that means for people, um, you know. I think this play really it spoke to a moment then when we've done it before. But there's something about it now. I think that people really can click into, like that need for care, the 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 difficulty of what it means to buy groceries for your family or like, right, get out of bed in the morning or, you know, like all, all of those things, all of those day-to-day -day quotidian things, both large and small, somehow Martina is tapping into something about that, about the human condition, right? And the daily struggle for, that everyone is in, you know, for their lives, um, that I think is really fantastic. Um, but it's the, again, it's like, because this play exists, the representation happens, mm -hmm. you know, and because the play, because the representation is on stage, I know, I mean, already we've had people, the, you know, diverse audiences, including people with disabilities, like come to the show, they're hungry for it, they want to see it, you know, and so it's hopefully that that appetite will just be fed more and more and more and more, and people will understand that, yes, there is, there's great benefit to this, uh, uh, socially and and economically, you know, I think you know on our uh, the night of our first preview, it was a fourteen people made their Broadway debut. 
14 people in our company made their Broadway debut. Like how fantastic is that? Yeah. I just thought that was really incredible. Not just us, not, not just the actors on stage, but the, the entire ensemble, the entire team. You know, that is that is really fantastic. How can that I mean everybody anybody in this business must you know, Broadway is the 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 World Series, right? It's the dream, it's the big show, you know? I think that's that's awesome. Kara, <laughs> <laughs> you made your Broadway debut last year in Clyde's. And Greg and is making his Broadway debut in this production. Do I have any advice for him about what to expect? Yeah, what should I expect? I don't Working know, Broadway, Greg. I mean, I feel like, you know, it's so, it's, it's interesting, like, you know, um, the idea that things change after certain uh, accomplishments or, mm -hmm. um, you know, and as, as an artist, I feel like the work and the quest to, and I, not necessarily like, I want to change your life, but the quest to work on, on projects and art that shifts consciousness is like, at the at my frontal lobe, you mm -hmm. know, at all times. I mean, that's like the hope, and that I that that that's what keeps me grounded is the is that or, and so um, I don't necessarily know how things have changed. Maybe the optics might be different to other people, but for myself, it's to continue to stretch the vessel and work on work on plays and work on art and work on um and work with people who are who are actively changing us and changing humanity through storytelling through stories um so i'm not necessarily sure what's going to change you know uh but i feel like the more that I get to work on plays that shifts something inside of me is maybe like the change of just what it means to grow um, and think deeper and, you know, feel like a deep, there's a deeper connection to, to the world and to other people. Yeah, I, it's interesting because yes, it's Broadway, the scope and scale of it is huge. It does mean some, you know, like actors, you know, not every actor gets here and mm. actors get here all the time and, and, and can be propelled to future work and sometimes stardom, you know, and sometimes actors just go back to like the next job, you know? So I think it's like, what to expect is I'm just, I'm just happy to show up every night and do the work, you know? And like the goal is always to work. And I think it's it's regardless of like it's easy to get kind of uh blinded by the the glitz, right? Um, the idea of Broadway, you know, but at the end of the day, we gotta show up every day, <laughs> you know, and do what we do and share this story with a new audience every night, you know. We know what's gonna happen, but these people have seen it for the first time, the right. great majority of them, right? So we have to show up and you know fresh and alive and, uh, you know, present for that. And I feel like that should always be the goal and whatever comes, comes, you know, but I'm not quitting my day job yet. <laughs> so all good. Both yeah. of you perform Shakespeare in New York city parks this summer. What was it like doing Richard the third at the Delacorte? and Twelfth Night at Marcus Garvey Park, and were you able to see each other's shows? I wasn't. Yeah, I'm really sad. I'm so um, sad about it too. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So, cause I was out of town visiting family during your run. Yeah, and I was doing the run. I was rehearsing and all the things. Yeah, yeah. yeah. So, but overall I would say that for me, the experience was awesome. Again, I. I'm just having a good year, you know, or <laughs> a good couple of months. 
um <laughs> you know like just but i think again being on like again new york city like shakespeare in the park is a new york city like a cultural institution you know like so yeah. I think, and then like so many people have origin like theater origin stories right about like, or why i wanted to be an actor because i saw shakespeare in the park right mm -hmm. it's free mm -hmm. and open to open to everybody right joe joe pap's original mission you know so to be part of that was really and, and that history and that like that lineage was really really fantastic in addition to getting to work with all the all, all the fantastic people you know yeah. i think was, but at the end of the you know and i think it helped prepare me for this because like huge stage you know it has like a cultural cachet you know but it i, I just had to remind myself of like um um there were just nights where i'd be like greg look up look at the moon feel the wind on your face mm. There's a raccoon walking down those steps. You know? <laughs> <laughs> just, just, you know, like it's awesome. All right, now, now like go talk while you're, you know, while you're wearing a crown and a wig and a cape. You know, all this stuff. You know, so it's just, it was just, I haven't had that much fun in a long time. Yeah, and I think like, yeah, it, it was just really, really fantastic in that in that respect. How was it for you? Oh man, I think it was probably one of the most magical experiences of mm -hmm. my life and to really what it means for theater to be free and accessible to all people. Yeah. Like, what were you Can you tell people what you what you did just so? I was Viola in Twelfth Night and it was at well Marcus Garvey Park like literally anybody could come just roll up to Marcus Garvey like you can walk in and just walk in your seat. Um reservations were encouraged but you literally can walk walk in so and you know like the truth of the matter is is like there's so many kinds of people that are in the park there's so many kinds of people that are in the park you know there are people that are homeless in the park and they were our daily audience members when we were rehearsing and mm -hmm. you know i there was just something about and also i'm from harlem i'm born and raised in harlem so it was really it's really like a love a love vibration to Harlem for for me, mm -hmm. like an offering, an offering, but really was an it was an offering to me. You know, I it, the intention was like for my community and for my community to enjoy something beautiful and special with all of the incredible actors and the incredible Ty Jones and Carl Cofield. Like Mark Classical Theater of Harlem, I think is you know probably one of it's just, it's a very, it's a very magical place and the very magical people and doing really incredible work. And the vibrations are very strong when the intention is for the people always. And that is, and the collective joy at the end of each, at, at the end of each show was, was the gift. So yeah i think it was really a very one of the most unforgettable experiences of my life there were a lot of people I, every single night what i saw was um and elise was there when i uh every night i i i saw so many so many brown people mm -hmm. in my community coming out and that was very special to me is that the audiences did look different and that was very special to me that's awesome that's great mm -hmm. Oh, Cost man. of Living was the first Broadway show to open this autumn. What productions are you looking forward to seeing on stage this fall? I didn't know we were the first. That's awesome. I didn't. I didn't. That's, I didn't know that either. That's cool. Um, oh man, there. This season is, uh, first of all, like amazing. Like to be part of the uh, what Cost of Living is one of five Pulitzer Prize winning shows on Broadway right now. Wow. Um, yeah, yeah, I think so. Or, or like scheduled for this season. Um, and then you got like that amazing like uh, uh, revival of 1776, um, you know? Mm -hmm. So I think I'd see 1776. Um, you know, Piano Lesson is right next door. That's how I want to go see that. Yeah, yeah. Um, oh, Death of a Salesman. Oh, I, 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 I was just going to swear, but F yeah, <laughs> totally, you know? Um, um, uh uh top dog underdog, top dog, underdog. i yep. want to see that yeah 
uh, the new Tom Stoppard play. I mean, there's just, I feel like, man, we are like chock-a-block with like amazing. Oh, like the. Yeah. It's, it's really cool. So I yeah. think um, like how awesome to be part of that energy and to be first ones out of the gate and be like, let's go. Y'all ready for this? It kind I of did feels not like, know this. This is like. I didn't know it either. It just made me feel. Yeah, you, know? you got it. You got yeah. it. I think. <laughs> um, yeah, yeah. So, I mean, I think like let's. Uh, so, yeah, let's give them. Let's let's uh, let's let's throw down the gauntlet. Let's like, you know, let's let's get the, the ball rolling for this like really exciting, uh, energetic amazing uh season how cool to be first out that's that's very, really very awesome cool. yeah cool. yeah but again you're again like to be part of also like a cultural shift you know um and just and again to see like the broad swath of representation and be, and be part of that right so it's not just our play that's doing that it's, it's all of those plays we mentioned right that in some way shape or form right have done that you know or are doing that uh you know um in their own way to, to try and be more reflective of New York City, of, of the larger, you know, um, of our larger culture, mm -hmm. right, um, is is really incredible. So yeah. Our Lady of 121st Street, right, um, is coming too. It is? Isn't it? No, uh, between Riverside and Crazy. Oh, I'm so sorry. Thank you. Yeah, yeah. Sorry, sorry. No, it's okay. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, between Riverside and Crazy. So Yeah, just... and then and, and David Zayas. And Liza Cologne Zayas are mm -hmm. like, I believe, wait, I think they're making Broadway history. I think so. Like they're going to be like uh, do, doing Broadway shows around the same time as like a married couple. Like, I think they're making Broadway. I think so. I don't want to speak too soon, but I think that they're making history by being the like one of the first couples like that are having a show happening simultaneously at one point. That's amazing. Yeah. <laughs> So you really can't go wrong, but mm -mm. everyone should see cost of living first. <laughs> yes. <laughs> yeah. Oh man, best deal. What's the best deal you ever got at the TKTS booth? I, um, I actually, it's like it gets connected to Manhattan Theater Club. I saw Proof when it was on Broadway through TKTS. Uh, I mean, that's how we got our ticket. Um, and that show just blew me. That I mean, I've, I have a huge actor crush on Josh Hamilton, um, <laughs> who's in who was in that show. Um, and that, uh, yeah, that play just that I was just like, this this is really cool. I want to be, you know. And that's like a four character play. That's like a small, intimate like play too. And I was like, I want to be, I want to, I want to do this. You know, I could do this. I could do this. Um, and here I am. It's really cool. But that was, I, I remember like that, like just being able to go see that play um, for uh, when I was like, you know, when I couldn't afford anything. Um, it was really awesome. I took my mom. She loved it. What about you? Uh, deals. Yeah, yeah, TKTS deal. Uh, TKTS. I, I I'm I'm from New York, so <laughs> I like go by that booth all the time, you know. And I feel like I've seen I've me and my mom my mom loves theater, and so like I'm I know that my mom has gotten some deals at that TKTS TKTS booth plenty of time for sure. I can't think of anything at this at this moment. That's cool. Maybe we'll ask your mom. Ask my mom. Yeah, yeah, cool. <laughs> All right. Last question. Be each other's casting directors. What role oh would you God. put the other one in? Well, I know this answer. What? <laughs> Greg I... is Superman. What? Stop. <laughs> Greg, where's your glasses? Greg is Clark Kent during the it? day. <laughs> <laughs> Greg is a superhero. You know, I, I... I would cast Greg as any, like, superhero that 
you know, has to transform. Like, because, yeah, it's like you, like, wouldn't you, like, don't really know. It's, like, mysterious all the time. But then, like, when he's on, he's on. You mean suspect. So then you're, I don't know if I trust you or not, but... But if I need someone to save the day, you're there. I didn't say anything about trust. <laughs> mysterious. All right, all right. All right. Um, cool. All you right. Those, well, from you have those glasses handy. I, I, I don't I don't have them <laughs> handy right now, but you know, I don't want to I don't want to give away my secret identity. Come on. <laughs> <laughs> um oh my god. Uh yeah. Kara, I just, I don't know. I think, well, I just want you to do everything because I think you can. Greg. I, like, I know. I mean, I, it's I too early like, to cry. <laughs> it's not too early. It's never, it's never too early. That I is think, really um, sweet of you. Yeah. No, but I think, again, I think we've had the, I, I might be wrong about this, what I know about, you know, your, your, your career and your trajectory. Again, we've had the great privilege to work on a lot of new plays, right? And really like, yeah. you know, um, uh, step into new works, right? And, and, and originate roles, you know, which is, which is so, so exciting, you know? And again, we both in our own way, like are, are pushing, right? Are advocating for change and, and, and our community and, uh, more authentic representation, right? Um, and I think, I don't know, our very presence, right, in, in, in these works does that in a way, mm -hmm. you know? Um, I don't think that will ever go away, right? I think, um, you know, but I just, I, I think, like, I want to see you in, like, a Harlem rom-com, yeah. <laughs> or like, you know, like Harlem Hospital, you know? <laughs> like, hey! Like, you know, why not make Harlem Hospital, right? You know, we've got New, New Amsterdam is wrapping up. If they're on their last season, you know, New York you needs a good- You are onto something. You know I mean? New York needs a good medical show, just saying. New York, like uptown, like, yeah, absolutely. like it needs a good medical show. You yeah, yeah, yeah. Come on. T totally I'm, yes. I'm saying you know but again even you know so uh, people may not know we're like we're we're literal neighbors um literal yeah yeah so we live on the same street now so i think again what you just said about you know your experience with classical theater of harlem in the park and you being of harlem i think you know to tell i don't know a story like that you know where you could feed off the place that has fed you Right. Mm -hmm. And all the all all the all the the joy, beauty and conflict of what it means to, to, to live in this neighborhood. And it changes now in 2022, like that history, you know, I think. Yeah. Uh, Kara, let's write a movie, you know, that kind of like time travels, because wouldn't it be great to see you like, I don't know, like setting you in the Harlem Renaissance <gasps> would be like, you know, my dream. It's my yeah. dream. Right? That's my dream. You know. I or, feel the spirits walking down the block all the time. Like, oh amazing. my God, imagine like, oh my goodness. And yeah. during the Harlem Renaissance, I mean, like the, the the Harlem reflected lots of people during that time. And yeah. Absolutely. Oh, wow. There's just like, like seeing you in like 1930s. Yeah. You just did like, come on. All, <laughs> all of that. But you're timeless, you know? You are timeless, yeah. Greg. No, I'm, I'm, I'm not really. <laughs> you are. Um, yeah. But thank you. But thank right you. now, you know, we'll we'll get there. We'll get there. But right now, I think we got to go to rehearsal. Yeah. <laughs> but, yeah. Um, but thank you, everyone, for watching, letting yeah, us talk. Thank you. Thank you, TDF, for everything you do. Thank you, TDF, for all the things that you do in making theater accessible for all people. We love you so much for it. Big, big love. And we hope to see you at the theater. Take care, y'all. Bye. Peace.